It's been a long time, but it was worth the wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Quaid. How you been, man? I've been excellent. Never better, actually. You, you know, it's funny you say that because I saw the, uh, I, I think it was the, the Hollywood Reporter story not too long ago said, you know, you've hit the number and you're happier than ever at this point in your life. And I don't know. I'm a spiritual guy. I, I chalk that up to a little bit of God. A little bit of God? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a big part of it. Oh, I think it's a huge part of it. That's, uh, uh, it's more than just a little bit, I think. Uh, when you let go and let God, uh, life gets a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, no, amen to that. And uh, I know that you're coming to the Athenaeum Theater here in Chicago, the Athenaeum Center, I should call it. Uh, there's a lot of great yep. shows coming there, by the way. But uh, you're going to be playing a bunch of stuff from Fallen, a gospel record for sinners that's been out yes, for sir. a bit, and everybody ought to go download that. Um, yeah, it came out uh, about eight months ago, and uh, it just seems to have a cycle. It had a really great cycle. It was uh, number one uh, when it came out. It, uh, it uh, seems to be going through another cycle right now, so it could be happier. You know, you, you, I, I knew about the country music love, um, but did you have a gospel singer that you were really moved by when you were coming up? Well, you know, the, there were they were singers, especially in country. Yep. You know, they did a lot of gospel to begin with. Oh, they yeah. grew up with it. So, you know, Johnny Cash, of course, you know, was my uh, biggest hero. In fact, uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford. Yep. Really loved him, and uh, so you know, and all of the Billy Graham, you know, in his uh, ministry, which always had music, uh, just as I am, is included. In fact, which was his uh, uh, invitation song, and uh, it's five songs that I wrote uh, myself. Well, I mean, you know, you got to be thrilled with it. And by the way, you talk about Johnny well, Cash. The songs are from my childhood. Right, right. Uh, boy growing up in Texas. Do you know about uh, Johnny Cash's grandson, Thomas Gabriel? Yes, I have. Yeah, I mean, he sounds, he sounds, sounds just, just like, like him. Like it. Oh, it's amazing. Just like it. No, it's yeah. amazing. Incredible. So you're going to be in Chicago. You're going to be at the Athenaeum. And the show's got a little bit of everything. Obviously, you're going to play the music. And talk about the career. I've, you know, I personally think, and we've talked about this through the years at different times, you've had one of the most interesting lives of any big star in Hollywood. I can't think of anything you haven't experienced. I, uh, my autobiography is going to be called My Lucky Life because I've, I've gotten to do so many things that I never would have dreamed of. Uh, you know, part of being an actor is that you get to step inside other people's shoes and find out what makes them tick and uh, the things that they do. I've, you know, I've been an astronaut, I've been president, I've been two presidents, I've been, I've just done so many things and I get to go through all those doors and say authorized personnel only, you know, because of research right. or whatever. Right. But uh, it's, uh, it's uh, been very full. You know, um, as a kid, you're growing up and I don't know when the bug hits you that you wanted to do this. But you get to Hollywood, if I'm right, in the late 70s, right? That was uh, 1975 that I came to Hollywood. And, and a ty Houston. typical story, didn't have any money, living on a couch somewhere? Uh, well, I worked as a waiter at Steak and Ale and uh, to get money to come out here. And I was at the University of Houston doing plays and in acting class and stuff, and... Uh, you know, I came out here, I think, with a thousand bucks, and that went pretty quick. I slept on my brother's couch, mm -hmm. and then, uh, got an apartment myself. Who who was the first star you saw? Like first celebrity encounter you had when you got to Hollywood? Well, when I when I got here, my brother, you know, uh, was doing the Missouri breaks, and he needed his car up in Montana, so I drove. That first summer that I was out here, I drove his car up to Montana, and I was on the set. So the first movie set I'm on, I'm watching Marlon Brando wow. and uh, Jack Nicholson. Wow. <laughs> about three months. Yeah, and, you, and, and, something else. and as a kid, are you going, well, it'll never be any different. It'll always be this great. 
That's funny. Right? Yeah, they back their head. Yeah. So. Uh, and, um, but uh, those, those was my first exposure to, like, movie making. Well, and, uh, yeah. It, Jack, but Jack, Nich- Jack Nicholson was a really very generous guy in spirit. And uh, we were over at his house, like, about every night. And I got to teach Marlon Brando how to play the mandolin for one scene. Come on. Spend a little time with him. Come yeah. on. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So hanging out with Nicholson and Marlon Brando, I'm surprised you survived it. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was, that's a memory I'll uh, always have. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a quick Jack Nicholson story. I don't know if you ever ran across the great Chicago writer Bill Zamey, the late great Bill, wrote a lot of uh, pieces about a lot of famous people through the years for Playboy and every magazine you can think of. So anyway, Bill gets dumped by a woman here, and he's heartbroken. And he's in the, in the process of doing an interview with Jack. So he goes out to the Ritz in Beverly Hills or wherever they are having it. And they go in, and the assistant tells Jack, Bill's uh, having a rough week. His uh, girlfriend dumped him. Nicholson brings him back into the master bedroom, talks to him about a half an hour about women. The assistant comes The assistant comes back and says, we got to get back on track here. He says, I'm not done yet. Give me a few minutes with Bill. He said the 45 minutes he spent with, with Nicholson was the greatest education he ever had in his life. <laughs> like I said, he was generous of spirit. Nope. No question about it. That's you, for sure. You talked about all the, the chances you've had to play all the cool people. You've also lived a very interesting life away from the cameras. Let me just hit you with a few things. Tell me if you still do them. You still surfing? Uh, every, I, I turn to uh, paddleboarding, actually, from surfing. That's not bad. Because uh, my neck, you know, uh, you got to like crane your neck up to uh, look for waves and uh, so I went to paddleboard. It's a lot easier. I surf with that. Yeah, well, that's that's but, pl- yeah, that's plenty. That's plenty. Yeah. What, what, what about uh, what about fancy cars? You still collect a few cars? Drive a few cars? Uh, I'm driving my one and only. Maybe it's a 2012 Mercedes 63 AMG. Wow! Four door sports car. It's a rocket. I love that's it. That's got to be fun. And what about motorcycles? That was a thing for you last time we talked. Uh, motorcycles, I don't know, you know, I've never owned one. So it's because it's always, it's a question of when, not if mm-hmm. something's going to happen. So I, I tend to uh, keep clear of it a little bit. Yeah, because when you lay one down, you'll never forget it. Um, yeah, are, you, are, exactly. you still, are, are you still flying? Yep, still flying. Yep, love to do that. I fly uh, citation jets and, you know. Anything with wings. My, my, most, most importantly is how's your golf game? Because I'm a fanatic. You're yep. a fanatic. My handicap is backed yep. up all the way to ten. But at this point, are you still are you still a single digit? I'm an eight. Good for you, man. Yeah. I'm an eight. Yeah, but I only play once a day, so you know, <laughs> work it out. Yeah, we have we have a mutual friend. I'm sure you've played with him at Lakeside or somewhere else. Tom Dreesen. And yeah, uh, of course, yeah, and Dreesen, of course, a good Chicago guy. Anyway, we got to play golf at some point. We'd have fun doing that, and I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, and I'll make sure I bring plenty yeah. of cash. Um, uh, fantastic. You know, we're talking about your band, and again, it's Dennis Quaid at the uh, Athenaeum, and we'll tell you how to get tickets and play a clip of something here uh, once we wrap up. But um, you know, I came across a YouTube clip the other day of Tom Jones and Jerry Lee Lewis. And I don't know that there was ever anybody better than Jerry Lee on on a piano, and he would punish that thing. And, of course, you know a little bit about Jerry Lee because you were Jerry Lee. Yeah, uh, he was uh, he was my teacher, my piano teacher, actually. One Come on. Them. And, uh, yeah, and he, when we were making Great Balls of Fire, he was on the set every day going, you get it wrong, son. He <laughs> 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 was, was something else. That's another one of those, you know, I got to inch myself. No, I mean, uh, I, I, you got, my life. yeah, you have got to wake up in the middle of the night going, did I do that? That was cool. Yeah, that was cool. But so Jerry Lee Lewis and Tom Jones. I haven't seen that clip. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's great. And, uh, I, it's just amazing. And, uh, like I said, Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee, a little damaged, a little dark, uh, corners of the mine there here and there, but boy, the, but the yep. guy could play. 
Yeah, no kidding. Jerry D. Lewis, I mean, he was, he was, sometimes he could be like a 14-year-old schoolyard boy. Yep. But then he'd be, you know, such such a sweet guy at the same time. And uh, he was definitely the king. I don't, you know, match him up against any any concert pianist in the world. Yeah, so 100%. Far. Yeah. He, he just, when you see him play, he just looked like a guy that was put on this earth to play piano. That's right. <laughs> so you told me about the band. Tell me about the night, An Evening with Dennis Quaid. A little bit of talk about the career, a lot of music. Um, yeah, you know, this is something that takes a little work to put together. How long have you been doing this show? I've been doing, so for a couple of years now, I've been doing this show, traveled around the country. You know, I had the, I had the shark, the, the band. Yep. And... Still, and we still do that, and uh, but I've peeled off and done kind of a one-on-one -on -one with me and the audience, and just me and a piano and a guitar, and it's uh, songs that I grew up with. It's songs that I wrote, you know, throughout my life, and stories that go with that. And it's just based on uh, my show is based on everybody having a good time. Well, I don't doubt that that happens. And again, tickets at AthenaeumCenter.org will uh, post that link. So you can click on that and make sure you get them for that July 19th show in Chicago. This is a good town for you. You got a lot of fans here. Yeah, no kidding. Every time I come to Chicago, it's just it's just a lot of love. And uh, never had a bad time there. Just It's uh, because of the people. Yeah, I mean, you got to work. It's a great music town. It's a great music town, and uh, people are real and upfront. Yeah, you want to have a bad time in Chicago, you got to work at it. So I got to ask you about the the, the Reagan movie because I know you guys started shooting this during during COVID, and you finally got it done. I don't know how you do that as an actor. How you go back and remember where you were? Uh, remember where? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, we made from four years ago. Yeah, we, we made it during COVID. Right, so and, uh, you, but didn't you have to have breaks and things where there's a continuity issue? Uh, well, not really. I mean, we uh, we did shut down. We we worked uh, a week or two that I think one of the crew members got COVID, so we shut down for gosh, like a month, and then came back. And so it wound up taking six months to make, and. Then it's the editing process because there were so many shots. You know, we had to create Berlin and Washington. And sure. That I also play him from uh, the time that he was like 35 to when he said goodbye to the American public when he uh, learned that he had Alzheimer's. Right. And so the, 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 the that aging thing, which is incredible actually these days, they really got it down. And so there were a lot of, you know, a lot of post-production stuff to do. And uh, the movie is amazing. I got to say now, it really is. Well, that's great and, to hear. Uh, really proud of it. Um, and it's out late August. Did you get a chance to meet him back yeah. in the 80s? No, I never got a chance to meet him. I, I was playing golf at L.A. Country Club, and he was over in the next fairway. This was, uh, you know, well after his presidency. And... You know, the guy's in his 90s, and he, he hit the ball like 200 yards. Oh, with, with amazing. Amazing. He was an athlete. Yeah. Yeah, no, he, he was an absolute athlete. Uh, that's one of those things, too. That's a good lesson for kids. If you get a chance and you're being polite and you go, well, I don't want to bother him, I'll get him next time, you don't know if there's going to be a next time, do you? Well, yeah, you don't know. He would go for walks every day on the beach. Yeah, from his Palisades home with the Secret Service there and, and everything. He waved to everybody. And, uh, you know, we, uh, Alzheimer's is a, awesome. and it's a, it's a tragic disease for anybody, for, for the person who has it and also the family around them. No, it's but, awesome. Uh, yeah. But, uh, man, he was, he was my favorite president. He really was. And, uh, it's almost not like a love letter. It's warts and all uh, sure. type of trail and of the times and America. You know, it's about America. It's about who we are and who we were. 
Well, and if you don't get goosebumps watching Morning in America, that classic, maybe the greatest campaign commercial ever, you're not paying attention. Um, I still think it's the best campaign commercial ever. And boy, yeah. boy, boy, do, boy, do we need to feel proud of this country more than ever and stop bitching well, at each other. Well, are very much like they were when Reagan became president. Right. Very much like that. Yeah. You know, just, a malaise. Uh, people have lost their confidence uh, in America. Everybody was talking about America in decline back then. And uh, it's, uh, you know, we need... We need the same thing now. We really do. Yep, yep. We need some inspiration. Um, I would assume when people stop you and go, oh, my God, that's Dennis Quaid, one of the ones you get the most for is the rookie? Yes, sir. Uh, it depends. I have a multi-generational uh, career. That's true. <laughs> you know, that it's, it's either the rookie with with, with boys or it's uh, the parent trap. Oh, yeah. With, uh, the, you know, most of the girls. You know, they've seen it like 40 or 50 times from a kid. And I tell them I used to babysit you. <laughs> to on the movie, while I didn't go do what they want in the next room while you right. watched it. <laughs> yeah, you were you were living in their VCR uh, for kids that don't know yeah. what the VCR is. Um, yeah. And it all started a long, long time ago where you even were an extra on the Stripes uh, uh, shoot with the graduation ceremony. That made me laugh when I saw that. But I'm sorry, this whole Hollywood yeah. thing hasn't worked out for you. What are we, close to 100 movies now? Yeah, I lost count at 100. That's a good problem to have. Um, I'm glad to hear you're happy and healthy, man. I don't know how you do it when it comes to your schedule because you don't stop for looks like anything. And I know you're on the way to Toronto uh, not to celebrate a Maple Leaf Stanley Cup. Don't bring that up. They won't find that funny. Um, but I know you're <laughs> shooting a movie there. And it just goes on yeah, and on for Dennis Quaid. Series. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I just enjoy it and appreciate it. The more, the older I get, it's uh, it's just what keeps me going. You know, and I still have a fire in my belly. And uh, so, why not? Yeah, if you love doing it, why quit doing it? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's great to catch up with you, man. I hope we do that in Chicago. I look forward to seeing you. At the Athenaeum, and uh, a safe drive on the road. I know you're in the right car. It's an evening with Dennis Quaid at the Athenaeum, July 19th. We're going to play something from the album. Well, you pick one from your album. Which one do you want us to play? Fallen. Go ahead and play Fallen. All right. The from, title track. From the number yeah. one inspirational album, Fallen, a gospel record for sinners. Get it. Download multiple copies. You're careless. You'll lose one. Uh, all the best, you, my Steve. friend. Thanks I will for see you on the fairway out there. Yep, anytime. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> okay. See you, Mike. Have a great day.